guys? Mega Man here with a Kingdom Hearts 3 review, and this is just a quick review talking about some things that I enjoyed about the game and thought could have been a little bit better. So just going to do a few quick thoughts on some stuff about the game. And there will be some spoilers. Okay, so started with gameplay. I thought gameplay was pretty cool having like the different Keyblade transformations. It brought a little bit more combat variety into the game and it kind of replaced forms which were introduced in Kingdom Hearts 2. Forms were what Sora transformed into and it gave him like different types of powers. But there were hints of those forms in some of the Keyblades when you use their transformation. The gameplay overall uses bits and pieces of each game, but you'll noticeably recognize some of it being from Kingdom Hearts 0.2 and Kingdom Hearts 2. Another good addition to the game, you can switch between Keyblades in the middle of a battle. So you don't have to just carry one Keyblade, you have three on you. Also, you can upgrade your Keyblades at any time, but you have to have certain materials. There is one part of the gameplay that just seemed kind of off, which is the flow motion. The flow motion sort of could like fly off of like poles or like jump against walls and stuff like that. Flow motion in this game just seems way off. If you play Dream Drop Distance, it isn't as smooth as that. Maybe it's been a while since I played Dream Drop Distance, but flow motion in this game, just a little bit off. Difficulty for the game, I know y'all gonna say something. Look, I played the game on normal. It was the first time playing Kingdom Hearts 3. I just I just wanted to know more about the story. I know some people played on proud mode. But even with the difficulty setting on normal mode, the game seemed like it was easy. Because if you played any of the past games, if you played on normal mode, and you were even slightly a little under leveled or a little bit over, it still was somewhat difficult. Because I would be in boss fights and they would just like fly through them, like each world's boss. And I thought it would have been a little bit more difficult, but because you know these boss fights took time. And to also include, you are fighting with more party members because the people that are from that world in Kingdom Hearts are actually with you and your main party group. The worlds in Kingdom Hearts 3 definitely got more expanded than the previous games, which was fun. Now, there was one world that needed to be expanded, Twilight Town. It was literally the main town area, the forest, and then the front of the mansion. I thought we was going to be able to go through the whole town. You know when they put up those pictures when they, when they first started showing like the photo mode for the gummy phone? Bro, it looked like you could go around to the, the clock tower, the train station. Like It just seemed like you could go all the way over there. When playing through the worlds, you know how they integrate the story from the movies and the actual like Kingdom Hearts game. That was good. It did seem like when you played through the previous games, some of the story was with those worlds. But in this one, the organization members popped up, but it just it, it didn't have that that stuff where it just it felt like it was more part of the story. It was just they just popped up. There's a boss to fight and then it's just over. Um, here's a spoiler about to pop up. So basically, when you complete the big hero world, that's like the last Disney world to go to, that's when the story starts to pick up. In the past previous Kingdom Hearts games, it felt like the worlds were a part of the story. In this one, it just seemed they had like a small, like few little hints of the story in there. But once you got past to the final Disney world, that's when the story picked up. The older games, it didn't seem like it was separated. This one, it just seemed like the worlds in the story were a little bit more separated. Collecting stuff in this game was all right. In the previous games, you could collect like the Winnie the Pooh pages and put that together and explore that world. Now for that world, you just play to a certain part and it unlocks. Some of the things you collect do unlock a Keyblade or like another ending and stuff like that. But I don't know, I just, in this game, I didn't really want to collect too much of the stuff in the game. I don't know because it does unlock some good stuff, but it's just maybe it's because of the first playthrough of this game and like in the previous games, you kind of knew what you got when you collected stuff. But I don't know. I just didn't really want to collect too much in the game. Now, talking about some of the stuff about the end of the game. Now, here's some of the spoilers and stuff. I think it would have been nice to see more of the characters throughout the game. Kyrie and Axel, you see a little bit here and there in cutscenes. Aqua, you see her here and there until you have to like battle against them. Ventus, you see him when Sora has to go help him. That's pretty much it. And then once again, towards the end of the game. Terra, you see at the end of the game, you don't even know what he's doing throughout the whole story. I know this is like the conclusion to this part of the story for the series, but it just would have been cool to see what Terra was doing throughout everything that was happening in the game. You know, we waited so long to see these characters and for all of them to meet, and most of them don't even pop up till towards the end of the game. When Sora first seen Ventus, 
There was nothing like, oh, wait, he looks like Roxas. None of that really was said. The only person that really said it was Axel. Ven looks just like Roxas. Or is it Roxas looks just like Ven? And even with Roxas and Ventus meet, it's just like, they just look at each other like, oh. Had a couple of plot points that needed ironing out. Like, they, they didn't even say anything for real. Axel just ran towards everybody and was like, yeah, they, he had to explain the story to them. When you get to the last fights, it's like two against three or three against two. Just depend on which fight you're doing. And it was just so different from what they did to the previous games. But instead of them just doing like a one-on-one -on -one type thing, whoever you were teamed up at that time, they're all fighting somebody and you're all fighting somebody. Even though the battles are fun, it just wasn't that difficult how the previous games were. Once you defeated an enemy one by one, they had their own cutscene pop up detailing certain things and that was a nice addition to the game. The final boss was kind of difficult, but not too much, only to a certain extent or a part in the phase of the fight. But it had a good mix up in between different fights when you had to go to different parts of the last world. The ending overall for Kingdom Hearts 3 was interesting. Really don't know how to feel about that one. Xehanort got rid of Kyrie, so towards the end of the game, Sora had to go find her. We don't know how he found her, but everybody at the end is at Destiny Island. They're all laughing, having fun, and it goes to Kyrie, and Sora's not there. Sora went off to go find Kyrie, but how? What happened and why did he disappear? There wasn't too much really explained on that, just kind of would have been nice to know what all like happened. Overall, the story for this game, I know it was a conclusion, and it probably would have been different if it came out at the certain time it was supposed to come out. But it were, there were moments definitely that were fun. But it's just towards the beginning of it, it's like you got part of the story. And then when you had to go through certain worlds, it just kind of faded out a little bit. And then picked up once you got past the last Disney world. Can't really explain it. It's just the beginning part of the game for the Disney worlds. There were stories after you left the world and like little cutscenes and stuff here and there. But I don't know, it didn't it didn't just feel like it really built up to the last part like how the previous games did. But thoughts on the game, it is an enjoyable game. It is fun. It definitely detailed and concluded parts of the story that we all want to see. It was just fun playing through something that was new for Kingdom Hearts again. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about the game and what were your favorite parts about the game. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.